So, Notre Dame Cathedral burned down. Yeah, things do not last forever. And on a much more small scale than Notre Dame Cathedral, some horrible mutcher termites got into my storage in Udaipur and did horrible damage to my old catalogs, old clippings, old newspaper articles that I had saved for myself for well over a decade. And they were all in one particular cabinet in Udaipur in my living room. And somehow some mutchers got in there it's a cabinet I don't go into that often, believe it or not. I don't look at my own stuff that often. I'm not that egotistical. It's so we had to go in there and dig out an old catalog for some reason and found out that the whole, the whole conglomeration is severely damaged with little termites of some sort that have eaten through all of these papers. So all of them got thrown out. They just all got thrown out. They're gone. It's history. Thankfully, some have been digitally archived that I still have on my files, on my computer. How do you preserve things? That's really what I want to talk about today is how do you preserve things? What's worth preserving? Notre Dame was certainly worth preserving in my mind, but so were my old catalogs. I've lost my old catalogs. We've lost Notre Dame, apparently. So anyway, be that as it may, I'll go back a number of years. Um, a number of years I got an email from the art historian Kavita Singh and from Delhi. And she wrote me an email and she said she had a student who could not come to Udaipur, but she was looking for a particular suite of paintings. And these paintings were made in, I think, 1725. They were made as illumination to a text called the Sat Sai by an author who simply went by the name Bihari. And they were supposed to be a beautiful suite of paintings and her student wanted to research them or see them, but she didn't want to make a trip to Udaipur if they weren't really there. Supposedly they were being held in uh, Saraswati Bhavan, which is in Gulabad, which is a large park in Udaipur, a large old park. And Saraswati Bhavan was actually the first museum in Udaipur and it's now being used as a library. So Kavita wanted me to go check this out and um, I passed it off to Ganpat because I was busy and like so many things I stuck my assistant with it and Ganpat ran off to Gulabag. He went to Saraswati Bhavan. He inquired about the Satsai by Bihari and he was told that it was no longer held at the library facility there in Gulabag. He was told that it was now transferred to storage because they were doing some renovations, blah, 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 blah. They have something like 32,000 manuscripts, so they couldn't hold everything in the same place. He was given a bit of a runaround, which is the same thing the student had reported to Kavita, which is why Kavita had written me. So Ganpat hopped on his motorcycle and he trekked way out to some storage facility that was out near the airport in Udaipur, long ways away. He reported back to me. And this is where this beautifully illuminated text was supposed to be. I think it had, it was a 700 verse text. And I think it had a hundred and some paintings attached to it. If I'm remembering correctly, I might be wrong about that. Um, so he got to the storage facility and he said it was dark. There were no windows. There was only one door. Uh, you know, your typical cement block building, hot, not taken, not temperature controlled, not climate controlled. And he sort of sweet talked to the person there um, who was a woman who was um, watching over the storage facility. And she said, well, you're welcome to go look for it if you would like to dig through all of this mess. And she took him in the back room. And according to Ganpat, she showed him a huge space that just had everything dumped in it. You know, like when you wrap a parcel at the India post office and you have to sew it up in a cloth bag. He said it was basically a bunch of cloth bags that were just laying helter skeltered in a corner and it was a big mound of these. It was like a mountain of cloth bags 
and you wouldn't know where to start if you wanted to find something. And Ganpat, because Ganpat has a degree in um, Indian literature, Hindu literature, he's a little bit, you know, emotional about these things as well. He came back to me and said, oh, Chacha, you wouldn't believe how this is being stored. And this is part of our heritage, which indeed it is. The story ended there. I reported back to Kavita and she, uh, she was not surprised at the time. Now, I don't know the ending of this story, you know, and this is, you know, admittedly kind of hearsay story. I only know Ganpat's uh, recount to me. Um, so very well, maybe all these things are back on the shelves at Saraswati Bhavan in Gulabag where they belong. Maybe they never made it to that dumping ground of a storage facility out by the airport. Maybe they're being taken care of, but knowing the way things work, probably not. And it really makes me angry. It makes me angry because yes, it's heritage. It's heritage of Miwar, it's heritage of India, and it's heritage of the world, which is going to bring me back to not my catalogs eaten by the, the termites, but it's going to bring me back to um, Notre Dame. You know, there's now, there's a lot of discussion after the fire. What should be done? Should we waste the billions, apparently, of dollars it's going to take to restore it? Should you just make it a relic now? You know, don't try to restore it, just keep it a ruin. And as some people have suggested, just put a glass cover over it. Give the money to the poor, starving kids in Africa or something, which always seems like sort of a pie-in-the-sky idea because things don't work that way. Um, always seems to end up in the wrong hands, not in the hands of people who need it. And it certainly isn't a permanent solution to a systemic problem. But yeah, I mean, I think for Europeans, I think Notre Dame is a symbol. It's a symbol of not just Christianity, but it's a symbol of European heritage. And Europeans have every right to preserve their heritage and take pride in their heritage, just like anybody else in the world does, just like India does and should. Um, so should Europeans. And what happens, because so many people go through Paris, have seen Notre Dame, it does become like world heritage. Everybody relates to it in some way because everybody remembers being there and seeing it along the river, along the Seine. So in the same way that many things in India become world heritage, everybody is concerned about the Taj Mahal, say, or the ruins in Hampi. You don't need to be an Indian to love those things and treasure them as part of world heritage. Preservation is such a big thing. I think that uh, so many institutions just do not keep up with things the way they ought to, especially in India, sadly, you know, where I'm located and everybody knows it's a problem. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. So going back to my lost archives, yeah, we all have our mini archives and there are the broader archives that are kept by institutions. There's, you know, world treasures, world monuments um, in our lives. The decisions we make today decide what is preserved and passed on to the future. And I think one thing that's rather sad these days, um, we live in such a high-speed society where everybody is so concerned about today, today, tomorrow, tomorrow. Don't think much beyond that. I think we're making a lot of decisions that do not take into account the long term. And I think future generations might look back, certainly will look back at our generation and say, not only did we fail to preserve the environment for them, fail to preserve the natural resources of this earth, but in many ways, we've also failed to preserve the heritage that um, of their history of not only the history of nations and districts and areas, geographies, but the history of the world, of humanity. And all of that is so, so important. Um, you have to give credit to museums who still have a focus on preserving heritage and preserving history um, and do a very good job of it because there are so many that do not and so many institutions that have veered off into um, 
being in the moment rather than thinking what is necessary for the for collecting and preserving this point in time for reference for future points in time who want to look back at our era. So that's my rambling thought for today. I hope Notre Dame does get restored in some way. Of course, it'll be restored and modified in some way. They always are, it won't be identical. Um, thank goodness for digital archiving. So most of the things that were eaten by the insects in Udaipur are all archived. And that might be the way of the future, digital archiving more and more. Of course, that's going on more and more all the time. So enough of my rambling talk today and see you next time. Please like, subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, share. Thank you and talk to you next time. Bye. This is Wazwax Wazwo from Bangkok.